We're getting ready to get started. All right, and before we start, we're going to do, as we normally do, we're going to sing a song. Same song, because it seems to work. And the song is this little, if join it with mine, I'm going to let it shine, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Say, Jesus gave it to me. Jesus gave it to me, so I'm going to let it shine, Lord, Jesus gave it to me, so I'm going to let it shine, Jesus gave it to me, so I'm going to let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, Father God, in the name of Jesus. We come to you today as humble as we know how, with our heads bowed and our eyes closed. Lord God, we are careful to give you all the thanks, all the honor, all the praise. You brought us from a mighty long way, and we trust and believe that you didn't bring us this far to leave us now. So we thank you for what you've done, we thank you for what you're doing, and we thank you for what you're getting ready to do. In the holy and magnificent name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, we're going to talk uh, from the book of Psalms. Psalms right in the middle of that Bible. Wow, well, you know. It's the Proverbs, right? Okay, yeah, the book of Psalms. Oh, okay. And then we'll go from, I'm getting to understand more and more about Psalms. I see that the book of Psalms is like a book pluralistic. But then each psalm is just a singular song. Ain't that so? That's interesting. Okay, now I know. Psalms Psalms 1, chapter 1, we're going to start at verse number 4. Psalms, Psalm 1, verse number 4. Psalm 1, verse number 4. And I'm going to read it from the uh, uh, King James Version. And it reads, The ungodly are not so, but are like the child which the wind driveth away. The ungodly. That was the first word that sticks out in my mind. Now I'm going to start with you, brother, because I know you're going to go. What does the word ungodly mean? Ungodly. What does it mean to you in your own words? They're not clean. Not clean. I got to not clean. Hold on, you hold your thought. What's your name again? Barbara. Barbara, hold your Hold on, Martha, where you going? Okay, not clean. All right, what do you think ungodly is? Well, um, my mother had told me one time, now this is, just a, this is just a flesh to flesh thing. She said, I said, Mama, this means a little girl. I said, how do I know what sin is? She said, Barbara, if you do anything and you feel not right about it, that's sin. Anything that separates us from God? Anything. That's um, Barbara says, anything that separates us from God <clears throat> is sin. That's that's a good that's a good explanation of what sin is. But what I'm trying to figure out what is ungodly. What do you think ungodly is? Okay, so that's right there. I mean, ungodly. My biggest thing is the false idol thing. It's not so much that I'm worshiping the fire of God or this. It's anything separate me from the time that I would be taking with God. Okay. Okay. Well, let's know. let's break this word down. Not a God. We have a prefix and a suffix, right? Mm -hmm. All right, what's the prefix of this word? Anybody know? Yeah. You in, un. Mm -hmm. All right, if I have a tie on and I put the word un on that tie, what does that mean? I just did it. I untied it. It was tied up, but now it's untied. It's not tied up anymore. Mm -hmm. It's not, if it's meant to be a tie, and if I undo it, then that means that I'm, I'm, it's not a tie anymore. It's just a, a piece of cloth. If I have something that I, if I'm dressed and I put the word un up under here, what does that mean? That means you're undressed. I'm not dressed anymore. I'm not, uh, Martha, you with me? If I'm dressed and I put you in in front of it, what does that mean? I'm not dressed. I'm not dressed anymore. So we're using the same thing for this godly. If I if God is here and I put the word you in the two letters you in, what does that mean? God. God is not there anymore. Now, 
There is also a suffix, L-Y. What does, what does that mean? What is, okay, let's use, let's use it in a sentence. He was moving quick, L-Y, quickly. She was moving slow, L-Y. That means, now that make that turns, the L-Y turns it into an action word. Everybody understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So first we, see if I just say un-God, that's, that's not really an action I'm word. I'm moving away from God. Right. We, not only are we not moving away from God. Right. Okay, in other words, it's not just moving away from God. It's like saying, uh, it's like you, if I say you're invited to the party, right? But if I put that word, you in in front of it, no matter you in in front of it, what does that mean? Yeah. You're, not you're invited. uninvited to the party. I don't want you at my party anymore. Right. So what this is saying is I don't, we are moving and we don't want God as a part of our movement. Everybody see what I'm saying? We are doing something, but we want to make sure that one thing that we don't want being a part of it is God. Everybody understand what I'm saying? Hello? So everybody understand, ungodly means that, that we, we know God, we have identified God, we realize that there is a God out there, but we don't want him in our movement. Understand. When you get there, you 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 in pretty big trouble. You know what? You know what? An ungodly person looks like somebody thinking they're getting away with something. They know better. See, they have God in it, but they think they're getting away with it. They call it being sneaky. You know, it's like it's like if Sister Barbara, right, was standing over there. And, and we said, nah, we got to do this, actually, Barbara. I got to right, do this. I can't. I don't want to use imagination. Let's, let's, let's actually do it. Barbara, stand over here. Okay. Now, Barbara is going, I'm going to say, Barbara, come and stand right here. Okay. Does everybody see Barbara moving from that place to that place? Now, I'm going to give Barbara my jacket. Turn around and hold this jacket up, Barbara, in front of you. All right? Now. Um, no, no, and so they can't see. Like, put it between you and them. So, like that, like blocking their vision. You can't see them, and they can't see you. Now, Barbara, be careful and walk back to the other side of the room. Keeping that jacket up so that they can't see you and you can't see them. Here is the question. Do you see Barbara moving across the room? Hello? <coughs> Thank you for that demonstration. Mm -hmm. Even though she had a something blocking attempted to block you from seeing her and her from seeing you, you seen her walking across the room. Hello? Mm -hmm. That's being, because God is there and we putting something up as if he don't see us and yet we're moving the mm. way we want to move. Mm. God sees you. Understand that. Don't think that, oh man, I don't see God right here. I don't want God. You know how we go in the dark room, cut the lights off, Martha. <laughs> or we go out of town and, to do whatever we got to do. Oh, you know what I'm saying. We go to a particular hotel where we don't think nobody know us. Mm -hmm. Or we go over to our friend's house where can't nobody find me over here. Right. Or we go out in the woods. You know what I'm saying, Martha. We try to hide. Well, really, what is not, it, it, it's not that you're hiding, Barbara, you're not hiding from Martha. You think that when you do that, we're hiding from, because I don't want Martha to see me, because if she's going to say, why are you doing this? You know, you know, I don't want my mama to see me, because she's going to say, why am I doing it? We're not hiding from, that's not who we're really hiding from. We're hiding from God. You see? And, 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 if, and if you're hiding, it's and because you know you, better. Yeah, you know better. There's a connection that you have with Martha that somehow God is in that connection because you, you ain't really worried about Martha knowing what you went to. you more worried about God. So what you're trying to do is be ungodly because I've got to do what I've got to do. I can't. And like you made a good, you said it's being not clean. i got to be dirty. i got to keep my dirt. But I, gotta, I don't want everybody to know I'm keeping my dirt. So I'm moving ungodly. Now, this particular scripture talked about, he said, he said, the ungodly are not so. What are they not? They're not profitable. They're not, um, I don't know if you guys look at uh, the Dow Jones report. Anybody know what the Dow Jones report is? 
market. Stock market, exactly. What happens? I don't know how to read it. <laughs> right, right. But do, you, I'm so glad you said that. You don't have to know how to read it. But what they use are graphs. And okay? arrows, they like down. And the graphs, they do like this, they yeah. do like this, they do like this. They do. Yeah. Hello? Yeah. When it's a profitable market, which way is the line going, Bible? Uh -huh. Up. We are not, when we are hiding from God, the Bible says, this is the way that our line is going. Is not profitable. Everybody see what I'm saying? Our line is going down. Why? Because we are trying to continue what we're doing and hide from God. Come on now. Don't act like I ain't telling the truth because I'm telling the truth. You don't have to like what I'm saying, but that don't make me not be telling the truth. Now, it says right here, they are not so. But, everybody say but. But, but means that if I was going this way, right, now I'm going that way. But means every which way I was going, I'm changing my chain of thought. Hello? Mm -hmm. Now, I was talking about being profitable, but he said in the verse before that, we were talking about being profitable. But, because he put a but, he's talking about the ungodly. He said the but. This is how the ungodly are. Are like the chafe which the wind driveth away. See, if you got some weight about yourself, when the wind blows, you can pretty much stay self. Okay, if I put a a, a bag of a, a, a pile of leaves and I wet them down, they got wet. Wait, so when the wind blows, they may a few months. But it, it, they pretty much can stay in place because they have weight. You know what I'm saying? They, they feel. That that water, what I'm speaking of, is the anointing, really. The, that's what we need to fill ourselves with, the anointing. But when we are not filled with the anointing, when we're working in an ungodly fashion, we are like dry leaves. That's chafe. That's a dry leaf. The leaf. And when the wind blows, what happens when the wind blows and the leaf is dry and all of that? Yeah, it just blows your way. Who knows which way the next wind is going to blow? Nobody. That's just like an ungodly person. Who knows what Barbara is going to do next when she's operating in an ungodly Barbara don't fashion? Even know. Barbara don't even know. So what does Barbara need to do differently to make sure that when the wind blows, even if it blows her, at least we, we can pretty much say she's going to go in the direction of the wind. At least we can say that. You know, like we like a sailboat. At least we can put our sail up, and we can expect the boat to go in the direction of the wind. But what you know? But if you're ungodly, we don't know which way you might go. What does Barbara need to do? She needs to anchor herself. Right? That's an anchor. She needs to anchor herself. How does Barbara? Anchor herself, and they told me I only had 20 minutes a day, so I gotta get ready to close it out. Barbara anchors herself by simple, by accepting Jesus Christ as her Lord and Savior. She accepts Jesus Christ as her two parts, Lord and Savior. Okay, that's how, but I'm just using you as no, an you're example. Good. That's how she anchors herself. She says, now, Lord, I need you. Like, I think you were just explaining to me, you had a lot of stuff going on. So what you had to do to get this stuff from going from driving you like a safe, first you had to stop operating in an ungodly manner. You know, now all of us still working on that. I, I'm still trying to get it. So don't act like you're even, we all trying to get us. But I'm just trying to explain to you that when the more you be ungodly, the less anointing you have and the more the wind is going to drive you away. Everybody tracking with me? Hello? Yeah. So we're trying to get some God in you. How are we going to get God in you? We're going to get God in you by you accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Barbara, you were just explaining the situation to me that's very dangerous, okay? When people are trying, when people use the word of God to control you, and they, they use it in error, and I'm not saying in error, right. but if they twist it or taint it, yeah. that becomes very dangerous. Yeah. This and wait, let me finish. 
And what happens is when that happens, it, and I think you explained to me it was a cult. That's how cults there, are yeah, started. Yeah, there's two separate things going on. I came out of a cult, and now I'm doing a regular Bible study with right. the Church of Christ. But this is not, okay, it's my journey and my spirit, but God, they instilled this in me when I was a child, not the cult. Okay. Not the cult. I got mixed up with that a couple years ago, and okay. I was coming out of it. I don't want to be in something else that grieves my spirit. They're telling me that you got to get the baptized with that church and then turn around like the Church of Christ is the only church. Yeah, we're at the church in the Christ, but that particular church, um, I'm, you know, it just... Well, well, well... But I don't want to turn... Hold on, let me just say this. Understand something, okay? Anytime I'm an organization, okay, I, I have to uh, set up... Um, different rules and regulations. Every organization has rules and regulations. Barbara, if you're going to get your life on track, you have to have rules and regulations for Barbara. Right. Now, those are their rules and regulations. Right. I'm not going to speak on whether they're right, wrong, in right. but I am going to say this, that you personally need Jesus Christ to save you. Right. And, that, and that, like you say, this is a personal thing. It has nothing to do with the church. It has nothing to do with their rules and regulations. It has nothing to do with nothing. I just need Jesus for myself, uh, sis, as your Savior first. After I take on Jesus Christ as my Savior, please understand something. I need some help with somebody telling me what to do next. That's where the organization comes in. Okay. Now, Understand, if you want to hear directly from Jesus, and I'm going to say the horse's mouth, that's not a good description, but if you want to hear directly from Jesus, you need to read the Bible mm -hmm. for yourself. Don't let them sit there. It's great to go to Bible studies and right. get interpretations and how they see it and even me, how I understand it, but you've got to read the Bible for yourself. But I hear what you're saying. I don't understand the Bible when I see it. Neither do you understand or can you count how many grains of grass are out there on the street. But God knows exactly how many out there. You will never know how many, how many, the count of hairs on your head. You will never know that. But God knows that. So he is always, his knowledge is always going to be above yours. So don't read the Bible to say, I need to understand this. No, that's not why you read. You read in the Bible because you, you got to, you got to have instruction. Now, instruction does not mean that uh, take a left right here, take a right right here. No, you need guidance. You see? And when you read the Bible, what happens is whatever your thoughts are, God going to, no, 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 scratch that. Use my thought. Even without you knowing it. All you're doing is reading the Bible. God is going to change your thoughts into his thoughts. So we have to, like I said, if you want to stop moving in an ungodly manner, what we have to do is accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. First, he's going to pull you out of whatever you were describing earlier. That doesn't mean that he has to physically move you. You can stay in it, but he is going to pull you out in a way of spiritually moving you. You understand? And then after he pulls you out, he's going to tell you what to do. How is he going to do that? He is going to use the Bible. Because he is not going to tell you, but he has said, I'm going to leave, and I'm going to leave one that could be everywhere at all times, the Holy Spirit, the Comforter. That's who's going to come in and say, all right, now let me tell you what to do. The Comforter is going to come in and say, okay, no, 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 stop doing that, brother. Do this. But he's going to tell you through the Bible. Not that you're going to understand what he's saying while you're reading it, but after you're reading it, you'll be clearer and clearer and clearer. Does everybody understand what I'm saying? I have to be a man of obedience. We only had a few minutes today, and it's 20 minutes. So what are we going to do? We're going to wrap up this session. What I'm going to do is uh, uh, I have with me a bottle. I checked. I know I have it. Where is it, bottle? Come here, bottle. In this particular bottle is, this is olive oil. This is not some mysterious, but this is olive oil. Okay, understand. Jesus said that he couldn't perform miracles in his country because people didn't believe. Let's get some anointing. Okay. So what happens is if you think that this olive oil in this particular vase is anointed, if you believe that, and if you believe that I have any level of anointing, if you believe that, then I'm going to take this olive oil and rub it in my hands like this. 
Okay, hold on, sit down. Sister. I want to get loaded. <laughs> I need some cleansing. Believe me, we're not going to. No, no, no. I can't let you up out of here without no, that. No, no way, no way. That is not the intent. Right? Come on, I want all this. Amen. We're going to take this oil right here, and I'm going to simply rub it in my hand. It's not, not going to make you look like a piece of fried chicken. This oil right here, and I'm going to shake your hand. Oh. After, let me sit down. After I shake your hand, we're going to pray. And after I pray, we're going to go. And I ask that everybody, if you believe, that shall be a miracle to happen. Let us shake hands. It doesn't take razzle dazzle, but it does take you believing. Yeah. All right, let us pray. Father God, we love you today. Today, Lord, we talked about moving in an ungodly fashion. We want to move how you want us to move. We want to move when you tell us, how you tell us, where you tell us. We want to move when you tell us. Lord God, we want, we want to move in a godly fashion. So we ask you, Lord God, to send an angel around us now, to encamp around us, to guide us and show us where to go and what to do. We ask you to do that right now. In the holy and magnificent name of Jesus Christ, we pray. And Amen. everyone say, Amen. Amen. God bless you all. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Y'all ready to roll? Yes, ma'am. Are you the same pastor? Did you know that the majority of people have no will, trust, or power of attorney? What will happen to your children, property, or other assets? If you can't make decisions for yourself, who will know your wishes? Will the appropriate people know where to find all of your personal and financial documentations and information? Well, we have a program developed by attorneys to complete at your own pace from the comfort of your home. You can update this program as needed with no add-ons or surprise fees. You can secure all of your important information in this virtual password protected safety deposit box with easy to use services and client support system available. Please call me today at 706-366-5520. Again, call me today at 706-366-5520. I hope to hear from you soon.